host once again to the Del Rivers Show, otherwise known as Last Refuge of the Damned. <laughs> I'm your host, Mark Elliott, and with me as always on the couch, the one right. and only. And there's Del no Rivers. more room for anyone else from the, <laughs> for the damned. Okay. It's like a survival uh, raft. Right before here. we get started, I would like to give a shout out to Gretchen, our number one fan. Yay, Gretchen. Uh, that's right. Um, we know uh, her son has some medical problems. He's been in the hospital, and we wish her all the best. And we hope she tunes in some more and gets a few laughs and watches our uh, utterly pointless and yeah. uh, meandering show. She might come up with a couple questions, too. Yeah, that's cool. right. Um, uh, we prompt Gretchen and anyone else, if they have any questions for Dell, send them in. Send an email. <laughs> My email's at the end of the show. You can see it at the end um, of the show. So we're going to go right to Dell's beef. <laughs> and, My beef. Um, is it still, got, it's still got music coming out of that. Yeah, yeah a little bit of Phil Dodge it. <laughs> no, I think it's coming from outside. We have okay. some disturbance from outside the studio. Um, <clears throat> we're going to go into a uh, part of the show I like to call Dell's beef. And uh, it, as usual, it's the little dog Daisy that his parents bought. Uh, yeah. He said that it was working on his hairdo. Could you... Right. <laughs> what was happening? Well, I got the dog, you know, I you started to get used to the dog and everything. And even though it's a biter and everything, I got it trained to do my hair. And actually, what I do is I lay back on, on my chair or my uh, or my little couch thing that I lay down on. It's like an outdoor chair. So the, the Daisy is responsible the... for the semi part. Right. Of the time. Is that what the it, swoop? It scratches at the back of the hair, then it licks it and bites it and pulls it at the same time. But <laughs> it actually does actually my it hair. It sounds like a bit of a scalp massage. <laughs> so you're, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, the the beef with the dog is actually turning into sweet beef. This is <laughs> a nice sweet beef. beef. <laughs> the sweet beef from Dell. Um, and you said your other beef was uh, he has a beef with sea salt. Sea salt. How many times? Every time we get food nowadays, you got sea salt in it. You know, like what did the great for. God Neptune decree that you should no longer use table salt? Sea salt should be used. Only the finest of ocean brine should be put into your salt or put into your food. Well, maybe you can it's get like, sea salt on. without brine. <laughs> I don't think so. I every think time we see sea salt, it's got the little black things from dead fish. That's supposed to actually. Like that. That's the part that's supposed to be good for you. Yeah. <laughs> you see the willies. <laughs> you want the fully chlorinated, eradicated I want salt. Nice pure white salt, right from a salt mine. You know where miners have died to pull out of the earth. I, I think want... you're racist. If it's not white, <laughs> Dell wants nothing to do with it. <laughs> wow. I mean, come on. You you're know, a salt racist. Well, there's brown sugar. There's brown sugar. Brown sugar. Yeah. Sugar. <laughs> okay, we'll leave that alone for the moment. I'm still an anti-dent type, though. <laughs> uh, another beef Dell was mentioning, as, as usual, there's a life ongoing beef was... Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, a constant complaint about women, his, his inability to get a date, uh, has not been laid since time immemorial. Yes. You know. Um, 1994, last time. It's always been like that, the complaint, can't get a date, you know, this and that. It's a nightmare. Uh, it's you know, he's done. out of shape, he's fat, he's got bad hair, hair complaints, uh... He doesn't have any money. He's got a good worth work ethic, but no talent for anything. Yeah. <laughs> so and the list goes on and on and on. And so um, this sort of veers into um, you have a, a joke about that. Well, this <laughs> to light me up, will you? <laughs> I'm depressed as it is. <laughs> I've just driven him into the ground. This isn't going to make you feel any better. I don't think. <laughs> Is this a joke or is it a joke about me? It's a joke on you, I think. All right. No, this well, is, I can take it. I can take it. This is a part of this veers into the part of the show, which I call memory lane. Okay. So we go back 25 years <laughs> to when the, the two of us and Jason Brown were all living together on Meg Street. Do you remember this woman, uh, just be known as Crazy Wendy, who had a little crush on you. It had something to do huh. with Del was doing a radio show, and she called in. And she was the ex-girlfriend of a couple of wow. guys that we knew, huh. and she lived up the street. And do you remember this at all? She had invited you over, and yeah. we, Jason and I were telling them, Del, this is it. You're going to get laid. It's a done deal. You know, crazy Wendy's a nympho. Yeah. yeah. 
Right, and for some d bizarre, unexplainable reason, she had fixated on Dell. Yeah. And yeah, and you were all nervous. You didn't know what to do. And we're just saying, doesn't just go over there and just throw yourself at her. Yeah, it's a done yeah, deal. Right. You know, and uh, you were hemming and hawing about this and the other thing. So we shoved you out the door. You went up the street <laughs> to crazy Wendy's. Jason and I were we were rooting for you, but we weren't holding out much hope. And uh, you know, of course, you came back with some complaints about why things didn't happen, you know, uh, you were going to see her another time, and we're trying to tell you that. Was Wendy? Her name was Wendy. Yeah, and so we were trying to tell him there is no other time, you know, she's going to come to her senses, yeah. and, you know, what little senses she had, that was going to be it, and which was the case, you know, I don't think you ever got your second chance with Crazy Wendy. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember um, that, though? I you know, I for some reason it's blocked out of my mind. Blocked I don't. <laughs> it must have been a bad experience because I don't remember. Yeah, you know, Jason and I knew a, I, a couple I of guys who, who had gone out with her, and she was kind of supposed to be a bit of a, a, a nympho. Um, well, what happened to her? You know, what happened nobody to knows her. what happened yeah. to her, but um, she was a little bit. She was a little bit nuts and had fixated on Dell for. You know, whatever, bitch. She's obviously nuts. But <laughs> you know, but for that moment, Dell had his chance and he blew it. And Jason and I tried to prop you up as best we could. You go over there immediately, you know, and like just almost had me pushed into the take door. Take full advantage of this woman's severe lapse in judgment. <laughs> you know. But you know, you came home empty-handed yeah. and yeah, the story of my life. To, to add to your your, it's, it's almost like the time when. Uh, Fat Randy had a couple of his cheerleaders come over to them. Oh, house. really? I, I didn't let him in, though. I was like, damn it, I should have, but they I were, didn't. They were probably <laughs> paid for. Um, yeah. I don't want to get into that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, have you ever tried internet dating? You know, yeah. 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 Not Craigslist <laughs> once. Judging from the, uh, the tone of your voice, <laughs> the crestfallen tone, I'll say things didn't go well. Yeah, not too Yeah, well. no, Craigslist is a bit of a train wreck when it comes to those things. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, um, I, I think at this point we'll take a little commercial break and we'll come back and uh, I'll discuss internet dating a little bit more with Dell. <laughs> okay? Great. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Make sure when you visit Rochester, New York, that you buy Luther and the BBB's Best Of CD and his live DVD, sold at the Bop Shop. The Best Of CD features Mr. Know-It-All, which I co-wrote with Luther, and features Bob Janik of the Insiders playing guitar. Hello folks, we are back once again. And uh, as I was saying before, Adele uh, had that rather treacherous date with Wendy. Yeah, and all I could don't really... get her confused with the other one. No, I, mean, <laughs> I remember he came stumbling in and all I could think of was YGTB FKM. You've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> that's your anagram? For that's, that's my new acronym. Acronym. Yeah, YGTB FKM. Is it an acronym or anagram? Acronym. Acronym, acronym. okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you had some news jokes you wanted to run off? Yeah, my usual weekly stuff These here. have been redacted by me, folks. <laughs> Every okay. day. Redacted news jokes. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Let him have double barrel down. Double here we go. The, news, the new Mars lander photos. You know, I talk about the Mars landing and stuff. Recently, a disappearing blotch was seen. Uh, per, you know, perhaps it was someone's thumb over the lens, like an old camera. Could old be camera thumb over the lens, sure. Yeah, the blotch. Could have been an alien, you never know. And uh, let's see. Famous offspring, Suri Cruz, daughter of... Uh, yes, of... Uh, uh, yes, <laughs> it's uh, Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. <laughs> how, how we forget. Recently got a, she recently got a suite at the Disney World Castle. But was right. scared away by the bed bugs that were dressed up and carrying candlesticks, silver spoons, and jewelry. <laughs> Just like a Disney, Disney of course. Bed. Country singer Randy Travis had a drunken binge and is getting divorced. Mm, but I guess well. Huh? Yeah, divorced on top of it. He told police that he was just looking for hit song material. He hasn't had a hit in a while, so. Yeah, hit in a while, so he would get divorced. Million dollars. Go to a lot. I guess he went to get a lottery ticket, totally buff. He was like totally naked or something. And then here's another musically related uh, one. The Surviving Monkeys announced their next tour with Mike Nesmith. 
and they will be rocking the closest hospice near you. <laughs> Just kidding, friends of Davy, because I do have a friend that knows Davy Jones. Really? Or new Jake, Davy okay. Jones, yeah. What else we got? Double a team yeah. collapsed after a four-day Xbox marathon. I guess that video game didn't seem heavy, but after running for four days... You know, <laughs> <laughs> a scholar spent decades correcting errors in the Hebrew Bible. But he still left out that chapter describing life after death. Wow. Left that out of the Did Bible. Did he mention anything about proper tipping protocol? Or proper tipping, yeah. <laughs> no, <we don't. laughs> That's my news for the week. And then we also discovered that not only does Dell look like William Devane and Alfred Molina, oh, yeah, from Nick, possibly part of his dating problems, but even worse, Dead Ringer for Marvin Hamlish. Marvin, Marvin Hamlish, 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 Hamlish folks. double chin and all. <laughs> it's really his... <laughs> It's really astonishing. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, great songwriter. Oh, yeah, he wrote sure. for Babs and Liza Minnelli. So you mentioned that you um, you tried a little bit with internet dating, but not, never too much luck. Yeah, not much luck. You know, I uh, I did some internet dating, and uh, I remember a post a woman had, and it read, "No psychos, please." And I thought to myself, you know, in this day and age, isn't that asking just a little bit much? <laughs> you know? I mean, some people have such a sense of entitlement. You know, what is she thinking? And, um, you know, I thought to myself, you write something like that, you're, you're really begging for trouble. I mean, does she think that Mr. Psycho is going to read that and just think, oh, right, let's see here. Uh, she, 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 she votes Republican, that's good. Republican. Uh, she's a member of the John Birch Society, that's good, you know. <laughs> oh, a graduate of Oral Roberts University, win-win, you know. <laughs> oh, no psychos. Well, I guess I'll just have to move on to a more psycho-friendly ad, <laughs> you know. Yeah, some real sick It's not going to happen. Mr. Psycho's going to read that and see it as a challenge. Oh, she doesn't like psychos, huh? Well, I'll have to... Throw her an email and turn on the old psycho charm. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, great. God. <laughs> I actually went on a date once and a woman asked me, You're not a psycho, are you? Thinking, and if I was? Yeah. I just fess up. Ah, busted, you oh, got me. me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's like, what do you, you got to be frisk for what? I'm, I'm, I'm a full-blown like psycho. Full -blown yeah, psycho. you know, card-carrying member of the Psychos Union for years now. <laughs> you know. Jeez. Like what, what, like, what would happen? It's like, you know, I'm really not in much of a psycho mood tonight. I already got a few basement prisoners. Let's just go out for ice cream. <laughs> yeah, just go for ice cream yeah. tonight. Jeez. I'm just gonna bury one in some. So what else you got? Times. Del had a minor beef about New Hampshire. He had some bug up his ass about New Hampshire. Oh yeah, when I when I was a kid, I used to go camping, and every so often said they don't say wash, they New say Hampshire. wash. They say wash. <laughs> this was in a brochure. This is like me on I, I on the stump. I don't know if you see it. It's not that's too that's much part of the camping brochure. Camping. Being bored, witless, yeah. sitting on the stump. It's actually illegal in New Hampshire campgrounds to play frisbee. That's how boring it was. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> there's rules to instill the boredom. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting there on the stump. I can't do anything because I watch this fire. Oh, I can't God. start a fire in a campground <laughs> in New Hampshire. What was it? Make sure you wash, wash behind your neck, your back, your crack, and your sack, and your dick. <laughs> okay, what else have Only we got? Only New Hampshire. Dell's gonna go on about New Hampshire unless I stop him. Yeah. Um, what I do have, we, you know, we were talking about women and whining, and uh, I, I wound up with a bunch of old stuff that um, I, I never did do uh, on stand up. Uh, but I, I could never come up with any dick jokes. I always thought, you know, you need some dick jokes in, oh, yeah. in a vine like, when you got a drunken crowd. Especially at the Frank so I, 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 I know. spun it around. I, I came up with some vagina jokes. <laughs> uh, you know, kind of a way to get back at the ex-girlfriend, you know. And my first one was the ex-girlfriend's vagina was so big it was once the official hanger for the Hindenburg. <laughs> you know. My, my ex-girlfriend's vagina was so nasty that the federal government declared it a national disaster area and placed it on the list of worst toxic Superfund sites. 
Official name? <laughs> Love Canal. Love Canal. <laughs> Her vagina was so treacherous it came equipped with its own foghorn and lighthouse. <laughs> How do you get a bolt to get in there? <laughs> very, very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, there was so much traffic in and out of her vagina that the highway department declared it a public safety hazard. Unfortunately for the environment, she loved to swim in the ocean. Talk about oily discharge. Oh, jeez. She's befouled more coastline than British Petroleum and Exxon Valdez. <laughs> Her vagina was so tough it once wobbled Mike Tyson with a left-right combination. Her vagina is so unfathomable, unfathomable that the famous philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche once wrote, when you look into the abyss of her vagina, the, the abyss of her vagina also looks into you. <laughs> <laughs> nice vagina jokes. A series of vagina jokes, which never got their chance to be played. Out. Are those more like vaginal observations, <laughs> observational humor? You could call it that if you want. Yeah. yeah. I know, because anyone that know, you know knows comedy, that it's rife with dick jokes. There's just so many. Yeah, I I, just, I couldn't think of any dick jokes, so I had I tried some vagina jokes, but uh, yeah. I never found the right crowd for the vagina jokes. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, our fans in Tokyo will appreciate some good old American vagina jokes. <laughs> uh, I think we'll take a little break, a little commercial break, and we'll be right back. One more segment. One more segment. Jerry Bruckheimer, in associations with Henbane Productions, presents Del Rivers on his Locked and Loaded Comedy Tour, appearing Friday, November 23rd, one night only, at the Henbane Civic Auditorium. All tickets available at Ticketmeister Outlets, cash only. Uh, back again, folks. And down in the final segment here. Against my um, professional advice, Dell <laughs> wants desperately to read his list of things that he hates. Yeah, so, uh, I have to do the rest of my stand-up material and get it out of my system. Okay, a, a list of things that Dell really hates. These are things I can't stand. Can't and stand you, them. And the audience can, you know, uh, you say, hey, I, I, that's true. Number one, well, it doesn't have to be in order. First of all, wet socks. I hate getting up in the morning and stepping on a puddle of pee or something and getting wet socks. Now, it's another memory lane. I remember you You would always walk around in your socks at our old apartment and you'd yeah. step in a little wet spot and it's like, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Then you'd be pissed again. God damn. Like, that would have... I stepped on some wet spot in my socks. It's like, why don't you put your fucking shoes on, you know? Get some slippers. <laughs> Uh, this is another one I can't stand. Extra hard broccoli stalks. I mean, I like the flowery part, but the hard stalks. I mean, this is almost like a beef list here. Can't stand it's a beef broccoli list. stalks. Just it's like a uh, vegetarian asp beef asparagus. list. Asparagus, yeah. It's a vegetarian beef list. How about uh, this one? Another pet thing. Uh, dog shit stuck between sneaker grooves or in leaves when you're doing raking. You're kidding me. I love dog shit stuck in my. <laughs> you love <laughs> it. <laughs> How about <laughs> touching anything or grabbing anything in or around a toilet? It's right. like, ugh. It also goes back to memory lane when there was, the key kept coming up every time you went to use the toilet. Yeah, this metal would come up the toilet. Yeah. Right, I couldn't there, get it, I put a curtain thing in there and tried to pull it out. Infuriate Dell joking that he had a magnetic asshole and was pulling the metal out <laughs> metal of the toilet. The toilet. Yeah. <laughs> This is another thing I can't stand, stuck zippers. You ever get that? Like you're trying to get dressed pants and your zipper gets stuck. Yeah, somewhere. stuck zipper will piss you off. It's, sure. it's a piss off. I can tell this from an old con, old comedy show. I did a, another thing I hated was, at the time was the TV show Scrubs. I couldn't stand Scrubs. Oh, uh, let's see. How about frozen Our over Nielsen's windshields? are plummeting down. I know I'm done. I'm Frozen over windshields. That's another one with yeah, the frozen windshield over windshields. Windshields suck. Yeah, yeah not good. That, yeah. And last of all, wasps, fruit flies, and mosquitoes. Uh, they're they're useless. I mean, what kills wasps? What eats Poison? wasps? Poison. <laughs> I don't know. Well, the extra one I had was Whoa, telemarketers and fundamental terrorists. Telemarketers and fundamental. I fundamentally hate fundamental terrorists. Okay. Okay. Well, well the only list I got is uh. Let, uh, let's add a, a, a list of uh, book club selections, some of which I read yeah, this summer. Uh, which is fairly interesting. Uh, some self-help books, uh, Polite Ways to Say Mean Things, Ten Good Reasons to Have Your Head Examined, How to Separate Your Chakras and Aura to Keep Them from Squabbling, 
How to follow the undisputed path to wellness so you can achieve happiness just before you croak. <laughs> How to use a stun gun as a marital aid. 101 ways to cause depression in others. 101 ways to cure the depression you've caused. <laughs> Ten, things, Ten things nobody cares about. <laughs> How to live with a numb nuts. Judge Judy's Guide to Fixing Tickets. And we had books about sporting and nutrition. Ten pounds of sugar a day, the true path to fitness. How to become a fat fuck on food stamps. <laughs> cliff diving on PCP. Cliff diving with weights. <laughs> nutrition is prevention and cure. The beanbag diet, it worked for me, it can work for you. See, financial advice books. These, these are handy. Yeah. Grift your way through Bible college. <laughs> How to go bankrupt for no money down. Government grants for criminal mischief. Big profits in hypnotic regression. Exposing yourself in public to gain extra income. How to stop a bank foreclosure with foul language. We have more wellness books such as um, Blaming Your Problems on Others, The Ultimate Path to Enlightenment. <laughs> books on Leisure, The Zagat's Guide to the Best Low Jobs I, I got, in I'm going to stop you for a minute. What's that? The best way for happiness is to find your misery off the misery of others. That's oh, yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> in fact, uh, my sister was depressed at one time, and, and I asked her, you know, why don't you go to the doc and get some meds? And she says, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to solve my problem with chemicals. I, I, I want to gain my happiness the old-fashioned way <laughs> through the misery of others. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, Wick Hat Shopping in Borneo, we have books on organization, 12 new ways to slack off, clutter control with Dick and Perry, how to become a paranoid nincompoop in six easy lessons, how to turn vices into habits and habits back into vices again. Who uses that word nincompoop though, I never heard that before. <laughs> yeah, it's an old name. It's an old name, name yeah, like nincompoop. That. Nincompoop. How do you spell that? Does it have a spelling to it? A spell well, check? Nincompoop as opposed to the opposite of compoop. Yeah, I was thinking of a nincom tax. You got a nincom tax, nincom poop. Alright. Go, go, go. Uh, a sh it's a shocking new autobiography by Martha Stewart entitled Gas, Grass, or Ass, No Free Rides. <laughs> then there's When the Party Ended, the autobiography of Marty Farty. Some books on engineering, how to build a bridge with jello, how to run a diesel engine on hamburger helper. How to build a nuclear reactor with Elmer's glue and elbow <laughs> macaroni. Some spiritual titles. This is interesting. Um, let's see. How to blame all your problems on tight underwear. <laughs> it's nothing to do with that Mormon underwear, is it? Uh, no. How, <laughs> how guns and ammo can heal the world. Uh, and we have the five-volume family counseling compendium by Psychology Annual Reports. Volume 1, entitled, Fuck You, You Suck, also known as The Difficult Beginnings. <laughs> Volume 2, Go to Hell, I Hate You, also Making Progress. <laughs> Volume 3, May the Great God Shatter Your Soul and Annihilate You into Little Bits, Encountering the Spiritual. Volume nice. 4, I Know You Are But What Am I, Reaching Goals. <laughs> and Volume 5, Fine, I Don't Care, Whatever, The Final Road to Healing. <laughs> we have some children's titles, children's books. Hyenas in the Hen House, Weed Whackers on Parade, and some travel books, Bored Witless in Mineola, and Tweaking in Sheboygan, sporting titles, Shot Pudding with Toaster Ovens, the 2012 Guide to the All-Steroid Olympics, and the latest fad, Virtual Exercising, Get Fit While Imagining You're Exhausted. <laughs> that, was, that was my list of stuff. I want to read that book. I want to read that one. Get fit while imagining you're exhausted. Okay. And before uh, uh, before uh, our viewers start opening a vein, we will bid you adieu. Next week, we got the big... Next week, yeah. we have... Uh, I well, think this coming is our 10th show. Coming. This is our... Or this is our 12th show. This is our... Doing our even dozen. So, so we got our 12th show coming yep. up. Even dozen, and uh, I believe we will be having the trailer for the new movie starring Del Rivers. Yeah, and so we might have a guest right. soon next week. We may next have time. some yeah. guests coming on the show soon. Yeah. So uh, stick with us. We're not going down without a fight. See you next time.